This is my Terrett 650 Spore quadcopter. And on it, I have a Pixhawk. And recently, I purchased the new Jumper T16 radio, which I absolutely have loved. Connected, binded to it, is the FreeSky XAR. And in this video, I'm gonna go over how you can make all of these components work together seamlessly. Now, with that comes a few challenges and a few different things I'm gonna step through, like how to configure all the different switches on the radio. And that's what I'm gonna target in this video. I moved from an old Turner G9X, and so to configure all the switches and stuff like that, I've had to use Mission Planner and make sure all my values are correct in the mixer. So if that's something you're interested in, something you might be doing, please stay tuned. I'm gonna leave all the links in the description below to the different products I've been using, such as the X8R, the Pixhawk, the T16, things like that. So if you're interested in picking some of these up and doing your own build, go ahead and check those out. All right, the next thing you're gonna to need to do to get this bound is connect your X8R to the Pixhawk. And to do this, you're gonna take the S bus port of the X8R or whatever receiver you might be using, um, which is the one underneath, and connect it to the RC in on the Pixhawk. Now I know there's an S bus port here, but for whatever reason you have to use the RC in. I'm not sure why that is. I would love somebody to comment down in the description of why that is, but everything that I've done with the Pixhawk, even using SBUS, you need to connect to the RCN, not the SBUS port. Next, it's got to turn on T16. I need to go through and configure my models better. Um, I mean, I'm just getting started with this. So here I have my Terret Sport. Hold down mode. And at the very bottom, if you scroll left, it'll take you to the very bottom. So we're gonna use the internal RF because this came with the internal module. Um, it does have possibilities to put in the external, but this one we're gonna use the internal. So internal RF, multi-protocol, multi-protocol, free sky, D16, channels one through 16. It's gonna be my first receiver. And then, oops, hit return. We're gonna hit this bind button, but we're gonna do that sim once we, we're gonna hit the bind, we're gonna power on the X8R while holding down FS button. So, and you're supposed to keep this at a distance. So I'm gonna, I think it says like three feet or something like that. So I'm gonna put it over here on my other side of my bench. I'm gonna hit the button. All right, it's been bound. So now what we need to do is we need to power off both the transmitter and receiver. Now, the next time I turn it on, it should be bound, which I'm gonna do right now. So power on my radio again. that on. Well, it looks like it worked. Uh, RF signal was critical there for a second. <laughs> All right, I've connected the Pixhawk to the computer and to Mission Planner and we're ready to get started here. Let's see if what we've done, the binding, has resulted in some data. So if we go into initial, initial setup, radio calibration, we will see that when we move the sticks, we are getting inputs. Perfect. 
That's what we want to see. All right, now that I have my receiver and radio set up together, it's time to start configuring all the switches and buttons and knobs and all that kind of stuff for my PixHawk. So first, I'm going to use these six buttons right here to be my flight modes, which I'm really excited about. Um, so I'll be able to have six different ones like loiter or alt hold or whatever that might be. So to start, you need to go into your model. Page over to mixer. And give it a name. You want to make it your six position switch. What's cool about this is you can click on here to edit and you can hit the whatever you want and it will change it for you. So that's a really nice feature. So for us, we want to use the six position switches. Click. All right, so in order to get this working um, in Mission Planner, you need to use what's called curves. So if you look here, if you start clicking through your switches, it'll give you the different outputs that are gonna happen. So negative 100, negative 60, 20, 6100. Um, but Mission Planner needs to be able to read that. So we gotta do a little slight adjustment. We need to page over to curves. In order to create a curve, you press the enter button. And just like before, we're gonna give it a name. Well, after you've created your name, you want to keep type standard. Make sure you count, you switch that to six. Um, I think it comes defaulted at like four or five, I don't know. But put it to six, because we have six buttons. Then we're going to start creating our curve, starting down at negative 90. And just a tip when you're using this scroll wheel, I always like to use the scroll wheel at the very top here, because the button's down here at the bottom. So if you're doing a lot of scrolling, scroll from the top side of the scroll wheel. Push down here because if you scroll at the bottom, I'm gonna set this one to negative 40. Sometimes you accidentally like are pushing at the same time and you hit the button. So I've just found it easier to just do all my scrolling here at the top. Okay, and this one's gonna be a negative 20. There we go. Then your fourth position is gonna be at at 10. And your fifth position is going to be at 20. I apologize. Your fifth, your fifth position is going to be at 40. That's what you want it to be at. Sixth position, you're going to set to 60. Okay, so now that we have this curve set up, we need to turn here, turn here. It's a custom curve and we need to go set that custom curve. If you hold down the page, it will actually move this way. That was kind of nice, I figured that out. You hit it quick, it goes to the right, hold it down, it goes to the left. So, let's see. We need to go in here. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Don't click yet. Go down here to Six position. Edit. You're going to add a curve to it, but it is going to be a custom curve. So that's how you add a custom curve, and then whatever you named it. So we named it MOD. Back out of there, and now you can see we have a curve set on it. And if you start going through the different buttons, if you notice the values are set to what we set them to. So we got negative 90, negative 40, negative 20, 10, 40, and 60. And these will correlate to Mission Planner. I'm gonna show you that next. So if we go in here, we can see that every time I click, we're getting the different readouts on radio eight, which is channel eight, and that's what we set it to. So it is working correctly.
on my own ra old radio, I had my channel five as my flight modes. And you can see in Mission Planner that when I move this switch, also my flight modes are changing. So what I need to do now is set up my radio to match the same channels as I had on my old, uh, my old radio. That or configure it in Mission Planner differently, but it's just gonna be easy enough for me to change the channels. So channel five, I need to edit. Okay, now that that is on channel five, if you look in Mission Planner, I have one, two, three, four, five, six different flight modes all set up just like that. So moving on to the next one, channel six, if we move over into Mission Planner, configuration, let's uh, channel six, so my landing gear, my gripper, channel six, I'm pretty sure was my gimbal, but let's just move to channel seven, channel eight while I have it here. So we're gonna go to channel seven, edit. And for my landing gear, I'm gonna have be my two position switch back here because it's either up or it's down. So we'll call this land. Here, so switch to source, edit that. There we go, that's better. Okay, that should do the trick there. Okay, so that's channel seven, channel eight. Oh, channel eight is my grabber. Go down here. And for my grabber, I like to use this, I think it's called like a momentary switch or something, but essentially what I can do is, this is just releasing it. So I have something stuck in there and it's just going along and when I wanna drop it, I just flip, flip the switch. So it's pretty sweet, just built off a of servo. Uh, you can see my other videos on how I did that, but if you're interested, leave a comment and I can go over it again. So that should, should be fine there. Okay, so I think I have everything set up. Channel seven, so I got my grabber, my landing gear, my modes, and then I need to get this to be my, uh, my gimbal. So if I go over into Mission Planner, let's see. Camera gimbal, yeah. RC6 was my gimbal. So, all right. Okay, so that should do it. I have everything that I used to have on my old radio, and I'm gonna have some extra features here with the other channels that I'm excited to do, so make sure you subscribe and get ready to see what I'm gonna do with all these different features, because I have a lot of channels to play with now, having SBUS and this radio. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So let's make sure this all worked. 
All right, we got some batteries plugged in and we're ready to go. Let's give this a test run here. Let's see if our landing gear worked. And there it goes. And down. All right, on, let's try some flight modes. So that beep is indicating that we're changing flight modes. Three, four, fifth, and six. So that's working great. And then, let's see if my grabber is working. If I can get a good angle on it for you here. Got batteries falling everywhere. Let's see if I can get you in there. Right there. So, works like a charm. So I think I've set out to accomplish everything I need to with uh, this video. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Hopefully it helps you out. I'm going to be adding more features to this drone, so if you're interested, please follow along and uh, enjoy what I have to show you.